today we are going to discuss about a 12 year old boy with a recent onset snoring along with tonsillar exudate and what is the diagnosis behind this 12 year old boy brought with the history of two weeks of continuous fever throat pain recent onset snoring again for the past two weeks along with mouth breathing that two recent onset on examination there is significant cervical lymphadenopathy involving both anterior and posterior triangle and there were lymphadenopathy in bilateral axillary areas but there are no hepatosplenomegaly but there are no inguinal adenopathies oral examination revealed tonsillar exudates along with that he also complains a weight loss of more than 2 kg look at the tonsillar exudate on both sides so what is the diagnosis right now what are all the possibilities is it a case of group a beta hemolytic streptococci that two at 12 years and not responding to a course of amoxicillin that was given previously we don't know can it be tuberculosis again less likely to have that kind of tonsillar exudate in cases of tuberculosis can it be leukemias or lymphomas it is a possibility tonsillar enlargement adenoid enlargement can be lymphadenopathy can be a manifestation of leukemia bar lymphoma or is it epstein bar virus do we have epstein bar virus in our country we don't know or do you have some other diagnosis in your mind what next investigation do you want to offer cbc to look for lymphocytosis to find out leukemias x ray to find out adenoid enlargement smears to look out atypical lymphocytosis or a tb workup or an epstein bar virus serology so tell me what will be your possible diagnosis and the investigations that you want to offer okay look at this there is adenoid enlargement in the lateral x ray neck huge adenoid look at this huge adenoid probably this one was responsible for his recent onset snoring and mouth breathing look at this his wbc is 16000 along with the lymphocyte percentage of nearly 60% platelet seems to be normal hemoglobin seems to be normal and neutrophil seems to be normal but there are bilateral periorbital puffiness or edema that is visualized here but there are no proptosis right when you count an absolute lymphocyte count it comes around 9600 cells per cubic millimeter for an adolescent any absolute lymphocyte count of more than 4000 is said to be increased absolute lymphocyte count this is twice than the normal for his age so what is this right now i have a triad of fever pharyngitis adenopathy along with lymphocytosis in peripheral smear study large atypical lymphocytes are seen but there are no evidence of any blast cells so what is this triad of fever pharyngitis adenopathy along with the lymphocytosis in smear study or in cbc this is called hogland's criteria for epstein barr virus and this periorbital edema or puffiness is called as hogland sign this periorbital puffiness occurs as a result of inflammation of the lacrimal gland right so now do we need to prove whether this is a case of epstein barr virus yes serology was taken which revealed an igm for vca epstein barr virus was ordered turned out to be positive so this is a case of epstein barr virus presenting with fever pharyngitis lymphadenopathy along with atypical lymphocytosis in smear study 
serology was also turned out to be positive. Right. So what are all the complications of Epstein-Barr virus in an immunocompetent person? Because of prolific increase in the size of adenoid and tonsil, there are chances for impending upper airway obstruction for which a course of oral or nasal steroids will be required. Second, it can also produce autoimmune cytopenias for which also a short course of oral prednisolone is recommended. And you all know that they are at risk for splenic rupture and for an adolescent boy, we need to advise them for not to go for any contact exercises or contact play for about four weeks. Right. So what is the lesson learnt right now? The lesson learnt is an adolescent boy brought with the recent onset snoring due to sudden onset tonsillar and adenoid enlargement along with the cervical adenopathy involving anterior and posterior triangle. Peripheral smear study revealed an absolute lymphocytosis along with the atypical lymphocytosis but not any feature suggestive of malignancy or blastocells. Hoagland sign means bilateral periorbital puffiness and the Hoagland's criteria is nothing but a combination of fever, pharyngitis and lymphadenopathy. And this is nothing but Epstein-Barr virus. The main important thing here is it might mimic leukemia because for a pediatrician, an absolute lymphocytosis occurs in three conditions. One, in Epstein-Barr virus. Two, leukemia. And the third one is pertussis. Pertussis often presents with cough, so it won't cause any diagnostic confusion. But because of tonsillar enlargement, adenoid enlargement and atypical lymphocytosis, you may think in terms of leukemia, but here, the child is usually non-toxic in case of Epstein-Barr virus. Again, it might mimic group A beta hemolytic streptococci. Again, in group A beta hemolytic streptococci also, tonsillar exudate is present, palatal petechiae is present. Both are present in Epstein-Barr virus. But your Epstein-Barr virus involves posterior cervical adenopathy along with non-toxemia, whereas Group A beta hemolytic streptococci usually presents with tonsillar exudate, palatal petechiae along with anterior group of lymph nodes such as your jugulodigastric nodes and the child is tend to be toxic. So this is a case of Epstein-Barr virus. Do not forget Hoagland criteria and do not forget Hoagland sign. Thank you.